was the night before Thanksgiving. I was heading home, it was about 2 a.m. These five kids were in a gang called the Latin Kings and they had come in from Brooklyn. And as part of their initiation, three of the kids had to kill somebody. And the other two guys were the lookouts to witness what they did. You know, you never think you're gonna be the guy who crosses the street and the rest of his life is changed because you walk down one side of the block instead of the other. And when I began walking down that side of the block, the lookouts at either end gave the go ahead and uh, these three kids get up and start walking toward me. When they got uh, beside me, they had their knives out and uh, were kind of up, up their sleeve. And the guy on the right went for uh, my throat and he pulled the knife up and in that moment, one of the very lucky things from my life when I was at Notre Dame, I was in the Bengal bats and I boxed for three years. My first instinct from all those years of training was to go into a defensive position like this. And the knife was going for my throat, but he came down and went into my collarbone and the knife, that knife had a 10 inch blade. So that uh, went all the way into the hilt um, collapsing my right lung. The guy on my left side began stabbing up my back like a sewing machine going in and out. And that knife had a six inch blade which collapsed um, my left lung. And then this guy pulls out the knife out of my neck and goes for my gut. And it cut um, a very important vein, if you know anything about anatomy, uh, called the inferior vena cava, which is where the two large veins in your leg bring your blood back to your heart. The middle guy had his knife out, but nowhere to stick me. And from my hands up, I just threw this textbook straight right hand and hit him and knocked him out. And he went down. Two lookouts ran. The two guys that stabbed me ran. And they left their middle guy on the ground. I can't breathe. I take about 30 steps and I go down on my hands and knees and I'm screaming, which was a very good thing to do because the little old ladies that lived upstairs called 911. I couldn't lie on my back because there were stab wounds. I couldn't lie on either side because of the chest tube wounds. I couldn't lie on my stomach from the surgery scar. I couldn't eat. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I couldn't sleep. I, I started having nightmares. And the, the DA said to me, in court, those kids are gonna come across as small and scared and alone and everyone's gonna feel a little bit sorry for them. So we need the judge and the jury to hear from you uh, what they did so that you will be the victim. Because of the difficulties I was having, you know, I had some, I had a bad line of thought come up. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna see that kid in court. I'm gonna kill that kid. I'm gonna jump up and I'm gonna run, I'm gonna leap over the rail and they won't, you know, they won't be able to stop me, some detective. And the more I thought about it, um, the more I, I, uh, I wanted to tell him that he was lucky, that he was lucky that I lived because if I had died, he was gonna go to prison for 25 years. The fact that I didn't die means the maximum that he could get is 15 years in prison. And as I thought about that, I thought he is going to walk out of jail 10 years early. And the fact that he, he owes that to me. And so I looked him in the eye 
on that day, you know, I had a cane and I'm, uh, and I said, you owe me a favor because on the day you walk out of prison, a long time from now, you're going to walk out 10 years early. And those 10 years are going to be given back to you the same way I was given my life back to me. So we both have something to be thankful for that I lived. I don't want you to think that I hate you. Um, but I do want you to change. And so I, I, I told him I, uh, I forgive him, forgave him. From what I've learned since then, there's ways to do better. Because in some ways, those kids are a reflection of where they've come from. Which is not to say people aren't responsible for their own actions, everybody is. But there's a reason people join gangs. And when the options are bad or non-existent, that's one option that should not be there. Certain things are broken in me that will never be fixed. It's not useful to try and get back to where I was before I got hurt. If I had a chance to meet any of those five today, I think I would just, I would listen.